Hey, what's going on, guys? Juan Pablo from 100percentfinance.com. We have Lamar. Hey, what's up, Lamar? How what's you doing, going on, man? Brother? How you doing? Now, what do you do here? Uh, fix and flip. I'm in more so the uh, Avenue Arena of uh, fix and flip single family homes. You hear that, guys? Fix and flip single family homes, but this is the thing you didn't hear. Yeah. Out of state. Out of state. Well, Richmond. About that. Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Virginia. And where yes, are we at now? Yeah, we're here in Calumet City, still Chicago land. Um, suburb outside the of Chicago. Suburbs, south suburbs, yeah. So a lot of people live out here and commute to the city for work. So he's actually flipping a single family home out of state. Now, in my opinion, that's a huge, huge deal. Simply because when I've done a fix and flip in Atlanta, Georgia, I had to be on site at least three times a week. But he got this this whole project so systematized that he can flip a property without his physical presence. Absolutely. All right, so before we get into the property, look at the deal, well, as we always like to do at 100 is discuss the numbers. So how much do you pay for this property? I pay 50K for this property. 50,000, mm -hmm. acquisition, rehab. About another 50,000. 50,000, all mm -hmm. in, 100K, ARV. $170,000. $170,000. So if you had to factor in the closing costs, mm -hmm. how much profit do you think you'll, you'll walk away from? I'm walk banking away from? about 45000 Around 45000 45, Now you said something that was very striking. Before we go see the property, I want him to share this. You said you're offended if... Oh, uh, if my, any of my properties on the market more than 20 days, I need to be on the contract in at least 20 days. I'm offended if it's not. Because I stand behind the work of my contractors and that's a big part of why I could do such great work and turn around and make so much uh, money off the property because of the contractors I have and I can stand behind their work. See, that's entrepreneurship in a nutshell, right? Yeah. It's all about teams and systems. Mm, absolutely. If you don't have the teams in place and the systems mm -hmm. in place, it's very difficult for you to get the same results that Lamar is getting. So speaking of results, let's go take a look at the property. Absolutely. So you haven't started the rehab yet, right? We have started the rehab. You have started yeah, the rehab. We have. So we started the, I'm sorry. We started the demo. So we had to demo the property. We just got a permit. See, it's in a window. So now we got the 30 right footer out here. Yep. And uh, pretty much demo the whole house is a full rehab. So we can start anew. All right, guys. So what we're about to do is go take a look so Lamar can show us the ins and outs of how to start your own flip. Peace. Alright guys, so now we're inside this beaut of a flip. Now I call it a beauty simply because I just love this the smell of sawdust. Right? <laughs> yeah. it, it's like working. you smell the money. Yeah, the exactly. money is here, right? Absolutely. So speaking about the money, so tell us about the, the extent of the rehab you plan to do and the yeah. cost involved. So this right here is actually gonna be a full rehab. Um, pretty much what I like to do with the property is I like to uh, keep some of the original features of the property. Nice. Right, and also I like to also add uh, more of an upscale look to it. So this room we're in now, we're gonna just gonna refinish the hardwood floors because they're here, but we're gonna put some beautiful um, trim, some wainscoting um, trim around this room, just as you walk in the vestibule area, and it just opens the, it, it just make it give that home feeling, you know, light paint on the wall to make the, expand the room. Uh, so that's what we're doing right here in this area. So you, you broke this down to a science. Pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. So the buyer has that full experience. Experience, right. That's, that's, and that's vitally important, mm -hmm. especially in your position in which right. you're a serial flipper. Absolutely. And you invest in multiple areas. Right. So where do you invest at currently? Right now, we're here in Chicago land area, so I have one property out here. I've done two in this neighborhood. Uh, I also have some in the South Chicago area, uh, South Avalon, um, call it the Calumet City Grove area. And I also have one in uh, Ronsville. So that's in Chicago. Chicago. That's just Chicago. Okay. So, so yeah, if okay. you can explain, <laughs> listen to I'm trying to keep up with them, right? Right, right. So what other markets are you Okay. In? So we're in the Richmond, Virginia area. Uh, so we have two properties there. One we're actually closing on next week. So I'll be flying back uh, to Virginia on Tuesday of next week. Got a closing there for Wednesday. And I also uh, bought some properties out in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I'll be going out there to start. Uh, Damn! Yeah, do you yeah. have a buddy pass or something? Like I should, Delta? right? I know, right? I should. Freaking fly miles? I, I do have a lot of freaking fly miles, so that helps out a lot. So, so speaking of that, uh -huh. do you actually look at the property first before you sign yeah, well, down the line? Yeah, so I have a team. So everywhere I'm at, Virginia, Chicago, and Oklahoma, I have a team. Um, I pretty 
must train them. They know exactly what I like. They know I only mess with brick homes. I don't do A-frame. Has to be all brick. Um, that's one of the main things I, I do like with my properties. So, so, so being that you <clears throat> buy, mm -hmm. fix up, mm -hmm. and flip properties in three different states, mm -hmm. how were you able to A, get into those markets, mm -hmm. and B, how were you able to manage it all? Yeah, I have people, like, so friends. Uh, so got a lot of my guys, we play sports together. So we're in different parts of uh, the U.S. So I got the idea, I was like, hey man, we maybe go ahead and make a lot of money by just fixing up homes. You live here, you know, I can finance it. You're the property manager. So, you know, that's how we got in the market. So I just use my resources. And you hear it again, ladies and gentlemen, teams and systems. To Absolutely. the point, he buys a property, he knows exactly what he's looking for, and his mm -hmm. team knows exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. So that way he can manage his whole operations out of state. So what we're about to do now is just take a look at the, mm -hmm. the fix and flip opportunity. Absolutely. Now, Bill Malamar just showing us some what's insights as to what's, what's going on. And okay. even your team, some of your team is here now. One, yeah, yeah, I do have, yeah, some of my contractors are here, and I believe a few of my assistants are here as well. So. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the property and have Lamar show us the way. Yeah. Okay. I don't know anybody about Vail. Vail. So yeah. many Vail, people, nice man. Right, so right. this is Dale. Uh, Lamar. Yeah. So, so what are you doing here today? I'm doing the underground right now, whatever, getting that ready in. Once they put the wall up, then we're gonna finish it up. Yeah. Alright, so what he's talking about is the underground is you bought this property and it was actually twelve hundred square foot. It was twelve hundred. But right. you have a, a plan in mind. Right, we're gonna so maximize sure. we're gonna maximize the square footage. So we're gonna add a full bath downstairs in the basement, a bedroom, um, uh, office and laundry room and also a den family area. But that, that's the cool thing. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing an addition in the back or up top, he said, what, we have a basement right there. Right. Let's just finish the basement, double our square footage, mm -hmm. so that way we can get a nice ARV. Oh, yes. You said 170, oh, right? 170. I just seventy thousand dollars. That's amazing, all right. So speaking of ARV, the after repair value, mm -hmm. let's backtrack and talk about the repair that's going on right now. Okay. So Lamar, if you don't mind telling us, what is some of your right. value add plays? Value add is the things that he's going to do to add value to right. this property. So Absolutely. what's some of the value add you're, you're doing to yeah. the property? So right now in the kitchen, you know, we're not going to put your standard thirty inch cabinets. We're going to make put forty two inch cabinets with the crown molding trim on top of it. Uh, that's one thing. If, well, you, also, if you can kind of show it just to see, okay. like. So, so right here, paint so paint right here was where the kitchen was. Yeah, it was a, uh, we had, it was a peninsula. So they had laminate. So we're gonna upgrade. We're gonna put a, a quartz countertop in there. We're gonna put a, a 42 inch cabinets with prime molding trimming around um, all stainless steel appliances uh, and a farm uh, and a farm sink. Yeah, we're gonna put a farm sink in here just to you know to modernize it, and that's one of the trendy now, things. Now correct me if I'm wrong, Lamar. Do you mm -hmm. do a cookie cutter approach? No, I stay away from the cookie cutter approach as much as possible. And why is that? We want, I, I want all my homes to have their own character, you know, and I don't want to uh, cut corners for homeowners. This is something, this is an investment for them as well, just like it is for me. And I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to be a place that they can call home and something they're proud of. Now that's a different <clears throat> approach. Most yeah. investors say, hey, I want a cookie cutter approach. Mm -hmm. I want to wash, rinse, and repeat. So speaking mm -hmm. of which, they might go to Lowe's for, let's say, appliances. Really? I yeah. know this is the best appliance that most owners yeah. want. Some to continue to do that. I do Bosch. I use Bosch. Yeah, I use stuff that... I try to stay away from the Home Depots and the, and the Lowe's as much as possible. I go to a lot of custom places for the finishes I want. Okay, so how, how long does it take for you to go into a new market, mm -hmm. understand the lay, the law, the lay mm -hmm. of the land, yeah. as well as, hey, this is the best appliance store mm -hmm. to go for this? How, how long does it take? It takes me about a year. I, once I tap into a market, it takes me about a year before I start buying. Because during that year, I'm building my team here, from my attorneys to my realtors, whoa, whoa, right, whoa, to my assistants. You, you guys heard that. Yeah. This gentleman said, I don't just go into a market and immediately start buying homes. Right. Right, you do a lot of recon, the demographics, research, yeah, demographics, right. the connections. Mm -hmm. You do, you lay like a, a property, right. for lack of a, for lack of a better example. Right. You lay down the foundation, absolutely, and absolutely. then once the foundation is laid, then you start building that empire. And, and I teach, and then I leave, and I go to the next market. A conqueror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. All right, so let's take a look at the other property. Sure. Now, is there any other room in here, Lamar, that you're actually going to? Uh, 
that you might be able to give us some insights to how you're gonna on this floor. Yeah. Um, the, be the bedroom is pretty simple. Probably the bathroom since it's so like big. Like you're knocking down any wall. Yeah. We have an open okay. concept. Like just yeah. give us some insight of what okay. you're gonna do with this floor. Sure. So this area is gonna be the kitchen and the dining room area. We're not knocking any walls down on, on this floor. Uh, all the heavy demo is happening in the basement. Um, I kind of like it because we have an open concept in the living room area where we just left. Um, and also the dining room, but for the flow and transition, I'm using a wainscoting um, from the living room down this vestibule area right here and along the walls in this um, dining room area. It's gonna be one paint color uh, just to the flow. I don't like a million colors in my house. One color, one flow throughout the house. Oh, great. Okay. We'll be able to take a look at the basement Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right, guys. So let's make our way downstairs so you can see how he's going to convert his basement into additional living area. All right. Shout out to you, Lamar, man. Oh, man. Probably walking down these steps, he's like, hey, watch this step right here. Like, oh, you gotta, yeah, make, you gotta make sure you be careful, right? <laughs> you got it's important. To. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Because you got a lot of stuff site. going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's a construction site, and I don't want to get hurt. You and know? you literally need to be wearing your hard hat, right? You do, you should. It's about to, especially down here. Especially <laughs> down here, okay. So, what is actually going on mm -hmm. down here? Like, I see some rubble over yeah. here. Like, yeah, what, we can what's talk going about on? It. So, right here behind you guys, we're actually building a bathroom right here. So right here, right there, now they're digging for new plumbing. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, conduit pipe behind you that we're about to use to, that's what you call a pit. Uh, so we got to build another pit for the bathroom, oh, down here for the uh, toilet, for the commode, yep. and, you and also bit, for the shower. Yeah, but uh, And we got an outline right here. So right here is your vanity. Your, your sink vanity is going to be right there. It's your, your toilet? Uh, yeah, that's probably going to be it. the toilet right here. Like it should be, yeah, toilet, I'm sorry, toilet. See there, it's written right there, toilet. Oh, right, right here, there. I see it. See and the right shower, there. we're gonna do a stand up, shower, base, um, in the corner right there. Are you also gonna have a separate entrance into the Sep room? Separate entries for each room. So each, we're not gonna put barn doors, just to do something different. Okay. So this area, we gotta knock out one of these boards, cause that's gonna be the laundry room here. So it'll be a barn door here for the laundry room. There'll be a door right here, where you guys are standing for the bathroom. Okay. Next room's to be the utility room. The furnace, hot water tank, and some other plumbing stuff. It's gonna be an area for that. And the uh, room down at the very end is gonna be a, a bed, another bedroom. So how many bedrooms? It'll be it's three right now. It's gonna be four. Four. Four bedrooms once it's done, and four two bedrooms, full baths. And two full baths. Two full baths. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And did you did you also mention just to make sure I got this, this mm -hmm. correctly, Lamar? You're gonna have a separate entrance. Entrance. Yeah. For the every door, every room is gonna have a separate entrance. Separate entrance. And what yeah. about the windows? You want to keep the same size? No, we're gonna, yeah, we'll keep the same size. We're just gonna put different uh, mirror, uh, sorry, windows down here in the basement. All right, so it looks like a lot of work is being conducted right now. So let me ask you this: total time frame, how long would it take? Um, about a month and a half. A month and a half. Yeah. A month and a half for full rehab. For full rehab. For yeah. two floors. Two floors. One of them being an unfinished basement. Absolutely. A month and a half. Six month weeks. Yeah, so I got a lot of people here working at one time. And how long will it take you to actually get that property? So I know you mentioned 20 mm -hmm. days. Yeah, That's pretty so I like cool. to be under contract in 20 days. In 20 right? days. Yeah, but you know the closing, depending on what type of financing they're doing, it could take, what, 60 to 80 days. So about a month and a half. That is a fast operation. Yeah, yeah. How long did it take you to get to this, to the point you had it like this? To this, it, man, a lot of trial and area. To this point, I would, I'd probably say, I like went off probably like two years ago. How to restructure the business, figure out things, and like I said, that one year I'm taking to build my team. I'm strategizing. I'm following people, shadowing people, see how they do work, get to know who the so heavy you hitters had, you are. So you rehab your operations. Yeah, I, exactly. That's the way I put <laughs> you it. Renovated yeah. it yourself. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. So mm -hmm. one last thing I want to ask: mm -hmm. the problems you face, because you might be watching this video right now, mm -hmm. right? And you might be thinking, "Oh man, this dude, this dude got everything." He must have the money in his back pocket. He got the teams, the systems. He, he got everything going on, but it wasn't always that, like that, right? <laughs> no. What was like some of the struggles? So that person right now who's watching and said, hey, mm -hmm. I want to get into that. I want to systematize my flips to the point it's operating like a business mm -hmm. without me technically being that self-employed person, doing all the work, mm -hmm. slinging the hammer, finding yeah. the money and so forth, finding the deal. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of those hardships you faced hardships. early on? Self-doubt. Self that was one of the things I had to get out my system, questioning myself, um, not going as hard because I felt like it would be a lot of doors were slammed in my face, and they were, you know. And it took me a while to get to the point that, you know, I'm not always gonna get a, 
you know, a, a quick yes, you know, sometimes it's going to be a slow yes. So just building my team, um, the morale, the business and trust in the system. You know, I've been doing it full time since 2010. So I got a lot of senior advisors who do advise me along the way in every state I'm in. So just b building that team. Once I built that team around me, uh, everything else just fell in line. So, but the hardest thing for a lot of people, for me at first, it was definitely the financing, finding financing. And that's, most, and that's most struggles that many investors yeah. <clears throat> run into, whether you're a fix and rent, fix and flip, flip guy, right. or if you're like me, a buy and hold, yield play type of guy. The number one thing that all investors need is money. Absolutely. You find the money and then you find the deal, yeah. right? Yes, sir. And so what did you do in regards to the financing? Financing, um, I had some uh, private lenders. I used to play sports, so a lot of my guys were you know, looking somewhere to invest. So you don't money. got that frame for no reason. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it for no reason. Yeah, so I used to play ball. So uh, I got a couple of my guys to invest in my build, in my, in my business. Some of them guys are still uh, tagging along with me, and some guys have actually started started their own. So I got a lot of pri private lending to get started. So now you guys might be thinking this. Oh wow, he he's gifted. You know, he 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 got the size. He plays sports. That was easy for him to get private money. But hey, if you're in that situation where you don't have those those resources, those connections, those networks, guess what? You can still get the hard money. Absolutely. You can still <laughs> finance your deals through our Relock program, the real estate line of credit. So if you're not able to take action simply because you don't have those connections because you're not yeah. a ball player, I wasn't a ball player, right? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I didn't have those those uh, yeah. those those networking Absolutely. private money lenders who were able to lend me thousands of dollars right. to mess with me. But what I did have was decent credit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have decent credit, no worries. You can always fix your credit. But we, what I did is I made sure I fixed my credit so that way I can finance my deals 100% by using hard money, mm -hmm. low dot mortgages, refinances and the like. So if you guys are interested in learning more, you can always visit 100percentfinance.com. So Lamar. So I'm moving to watch their step. Oh yeah, you gotta watch the step. Who's that coming up? Watch it. You Yo, watched it last I hate to interrupt, but you have a fan out there, man. I, I, I just. Who, Lamar? Like, no, you, Juan Pablo. Somebody was driving up the street, came back around, hey, was there a Juan Pablo out there? Uh, <laughs> I've, been I've, been I've been talking to her for 15 minutes. <laughs> Tell her you look, look, Juan Pablo would love to meet you. He's right outside. I just, you know, brought him in with, with another friend. Come out. <laughs> she wait. She waiting for you right now. She with her daughter. She's talking about. Look, I've been following his channel. I've been trying to get into real estate. You know, I was like, oh, look, let's, let's go come on, yeah, let's go. She wait. Let's go. Watch you guys stuff. That's, that's what happens, guys. Yeah. You find your business, man. <laughs> Come on, I can't yeah, yeah. Look at that right there, get a chance. That is so wild. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, wait, that's Juan Pablo. Yeah, right. you was out here before um, y'all walked in. I'm like, no, that's Juan Pablo. I'm going back. My daughter like, Ma, I'm like, no, I'm going back. <laughs> like, that's Juan Pablo. I need to talk to him. <laughs> so I just realized that I want to like do some stuff with real estate and e-com. And I've been looking at your channel. It was like recently that I became a subscriber, maybe a few months ago. Oh, cool. But it's so many people. It's like you and Erica and a whole bunch that's of other oh, people. Oh, you know Erica's yeah, Erica. I follow her too. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, Although okay. Podcast. Yeah. So I'm like, who do I go? Who do I go with? And then I see you, and I'm riding down the street and I see you. So I'm like, okay. Stop. Yeah, like gotta stop. Gotta talk to him. So I need, I need, <laughs> right. I need to get in. I need to get in on what you got going oh, on. We Let me give you my car first and foremost. <laughs> yes. So, yes. so what, what's pretty much your your end goal? You trying to buy a home? You trying to fix and flip? You know, I kind of want to do a little. I, yeah, well, see, I was just telling them the whole situation. Um, right now, I'm a full time Uber driver. I'm kind of fighting with my job back and forth. I kind of look at it like a sign because it's not something I really wanted to do anyway. True. And so I've been driving Uber full time. So. Um, I want to get into maybe some fix and flips and some buy and holds. You know what I'm saying? I pay twelve hundred a month around the corner. He's like, no, you don't need to be paying that kind of money. Like, buy your first property. So I just kind of want to get yeah. into something. I really want to do an e-com store too. And my baby, she want to do a beauty bar. So oh, yeah, look at y'all. And I'm trying Austin to get North. her to real estate too. So I'm, I'm ready to get going, but I need a little bit of uh, guidance and direction. Oh, we'll definitely. And my brother is an electrician too. He got his license. So I was just wondering, like, if y'all need somebody <laughs> else on the team, I'm she plugging plug. everybody. She the plug. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, oh yeah, we'll, we'll definitely help you out. We'll definitely help you out, especially starting off with some guidance as well. Yeah, I definitely need need as much guidance as possible. <laughs> I think we, I think we got a book for it too, don't we? 
Yeah. All right, so first we can start off by giving you a book. But that's, okay. that's just amazing. That's Thank the first you. time someone did a drop out. I was like, hold up. Like, I'm like, look, I know. Right. And, and she you now. Yeah. Cause I'm, I, and I was I'm like, like you know, cool. I was like, look, come on out, man. Wild Bob was a cool guy. Just come on out. Come on, stop the car. Stop the car. I'm definitely trying to figure out how do I get to the money, like the business lines of credit. You see, guys, that's the main thing. Business lines of credit. Like, I'm definitely trying to figure out how to get to the money. The business lines of credit are like serious. It is serious. I'm gonna start off with a book here. Oh, thank you. Every time I travel, I make sure I can keep a couple books <laughs> just in case. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you are. So, so the money. What, what, uh, what questions do you have about the money? <sighs> that way, I can kind of give you some. I think I need to. Insight. I need to figure out how to budget a little bit better so I can have the money I need to get into the game because it's it takes money to make money right it's gonna take me some money to get business credit well it's gonna take well, me some money to get they, my they, personal they, credit they, they, they do say that it takes money to make money but does that have to be your money right right okay so it could be someone else's i like that right <laughs> like lamar i like other people's money uh it, she said it takes money to make money did it take your money to make money or it took someone else's it's opm other people's money <laughs> other people's money you keep okay. your money shout out to yeah. you guys for always following us <laughs> Watching us because we love interacting with our people, right? And that's why I go by the people's mentor. I had the shirt on yesterday. We had the baseball game. I love it. Because he got the mentor of the people. Yes. Because I started off in real estate. I didn't have the know-how. Didn't have the money. Didn't have the connections. And I said, you know what? I, I myself need mentorship. Then once I gained those things, quit my nine to five. I said, you know what? Why not just share this message with the masses? Yes. And if you're not sharing your message with the masses, you learned a lot of good things about real estate financing, funding, and so forth. You're being selfish. Right, you have to. That's why I always want to quit my nine to five because I want to be that person to be able to share my God given gifts and abilities with the world. Yes, right? Yes, because you're, you're robbing society. I'll, I'll close with this you're robbing society of your God given abilities if you stay at your nine to five. For one, you're robbing people on a micro level. There could be that one person that actually needs your job, but you're like, you know what, I'm not going to give it up because I'm scared to do this thing full time. I'm scared to actually jump out and move forward with real estate investing. You're robbing that person on a micro level, but on a macro level, you'll be robbing society of your voice. So imagine if I was still at the government, still doing properties on the side, which I was doing for many years, I would never be able to run across summer. So let's do a group hug, but as always guys, this is to your success. Let's get this money. Peace.